Anthony Hopkins' version of Hannibal Lecter is renowned, and he did a great job with the character in Silence of the Lambs, of course. But since then, the Lecter character has morphed into other variations, some quite bizarre. In Silence of the Lambs, Lecter already had a godlike superhuman intellect that was beyond that of any actual human being I can think of. In the following novel, Hannibal, and the atrociously bad movie version that followed, he effectively became the hero of the story through the most bizarre of circumstances. Whereas Lecter formally lacked morals in his murderous activities, in Hannibal, his victims seemed to mostly be people who deserved what he did to them. The far superior book is really interesting though, so I recommend that. In the follow-up novel, Hannibal Rising, childhood traumas for Lecter were brought to the forefront, casting him as a victim of the world. And again, he was the hero, only committing murderous acts against those who deserved his punishments. Unfortunately, the movie version was very poorly directed and badly casted. And then came the TV series Hannibal. I watched a handful of episodes, but it was mostly unwatchable for me. The sections of dialogue that were good were lifted straight from Harris's previous novels featuring the character. And as with the movie versions of Red Dragon and Hannibal, the dumbest dialogue and most poorly written plot events were from the screenwriters, the stuff that was changed from the actual novel. The series wasn't helped either by the inappropriate rewriting of characters to change their gender so as to tick political correctness boxes. The gender changes did not fit with the characters as they were written in the original novels, and so there's a mismatch in how they were cast. Gradually over the years, Lecter has become a franchise character, written for shock value and with a bizarre serial killer superhero framing, which at times seems as cheap as the over-sensationalist copycat books and movies that have tried to tap into the intelligence and daring of Harris's early Lecter novels. The incarnation of Lecter that remains the most convincing is in the first novel that featured the character, Red Dragon, and the most convincing cinematic version is the first movie adaptation of that book, which was given the unfitting title Manhunter. Apparently the filmmakers were concerned that the title Red Dragon would make people think it was a martial arts movie, but still, some involved with the production say it was a weak title, and I agree with them. I think they could have come up with better. Anyway, in this Red Dragon Manhunter story, Lecter is more clearly an unempathic psychopath who doesn't have good reasons to kill, and he is largely presented without attempts to bolter him as some sort of superhero. The character is also played by a different actor, Brian Cox, who does an excellent job. Some say even better than Hopkins' performance in Silence of the Lambs, though personally I love both performances for different reasons. The Lecter role itself was different in each film and was cast accordingly. Manhunter required a very dangerous-looking, cold, clinical psychopath Lecter to sit in opposition to the professionally experienced Will Graham, who was male. Will's emotional dilemma is his fear that he himself is a closet killer in denial of his urges, so it was essential that Lecter be presented as a reflection of what Will hates and fears. Cox delivered perfectly to meet all those requirements. The follow-up, Silence of the Lambs, required a courteous, at times gentle, father figure type, with a dark but slightly romantic edge to contrast against Clary Starling, who had lost her real father and was single, and was an inexperienced FBI agent just starting out on her career. Lecter becomes a partial father substitute for her and a partial love interest, and Hopkins delivered perfectly to meet those requirements. So I can't personally see either actor successfully replacing the other in their respective, very different role requirements. Hopkins' presence in the 2002 film Red Dragon, a remake of Manhunter, as we'll explore later, demonstrates this cross-incompatibility. Like with Silence of the Lambs, the Lecter scenes in Manhunter are some of the most nuanced and complex examples of psychological chess games between fiction characters that I've ever come across. Multiple layers of deception, revelation, manipulation and unconscious probing are to be found in these scenes, expertly weaved into dialogue written by Harris in the source novels, but with non-verbal communication to match, courtesy of shrewd acting and direction. So what I'm going to do is take you through the first and longest lecture scene in the Manhunter film. We'll pay special attention to the nuances of dialogue and the high-quality acting. And I'll add in comparative notes from the Red Dragon novel version of the scene. I'll also later make some comparisons of the 2002 remake of Manhunter, which did have the title Red Dragon. And briefly I'll cover the other two Lecter scenes that occur later on in the Manhunter film. 
For those of you who haven't seen the movie or read the novel or can't remember much from either, the basic scenario is this. Will Graham, the profiler who caught Lecter but was hospitalised in the process via a vicious stab wound, has been retired from police service for several years. After recovering from his physical injury by Lecter, he had emotional difficulties and spent time in a mental hospital. His efforts to step into the mindset of the killers who he was hunting, which included reconstructing their horrific fantasies in his own mind, took their toll. Since recovering physically and mentally, he's lived in a beach house with his wife and son, pushing serial killer issues as far out of his conscious mind as he can. But now he's been asked to help hunt a serial killer who kills entire families every full moon, a killer known to police as the Tooth Fairy. Reluctantly stepping up to the plate again, Will Graham has decided to visit his old nemesis Hannibal Lecter in his mental hospital cell. His excuse for his visit is to ask Lecter to help him profile the Tooth Fairy killer. His real reason is that he's hoping that being in Lecter's presence will help him recover the psychopathic mindset. The very first thing to note about the scene is that the physical setup is very different to the scenes of Clarice Starling visiting Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. In that movie, an unrealistic, dark and grimy dungeon-type setting was used for dramatics, which worked well enough. But here, everything is clean, clinical white, including the furniture, the cell bars, and even Lecter's clothes. I can imagine this room would be pretty harsh on the eyes. It's the most luminous set in the whole movie by a long shot, and my impression is that it creates a weird spiritual vibe for Lecter's presence. Even in this, the earliest screen incarnation of Lecter, it's like his domain casts him as a god with almost psychic insights. A similar vibe was present when Clarice visited Lecter in a temporary holding cell in Silence of the Lambs. Lecter, brightly lit from above and wearing bright white. God in a cage, if you will. Same thing here. Being in Lecter's presence tends to be an invitation of psychological surgery and sometimes even judgment. Another major set difference is that Clarice Starling sat in a hallway to talk to Lecter, but Will Graham has to enter a room and be left alone with Lecter, the door locks from outside by a guard, and the room itself split in two by a set of bars. This physical setup of locking Will in with Lecter I think was a very wise choice from the filmmakers. It makes the scene more claustrophobic because Lecter is harder to psychologically escape from. In the Red Dragon novel, Will sat in a hallway facing the cell, like in Sounds of the Lambs. Will hesitantly steps in and sits as quietly as he can, staring at Lecter the whole time, while he waits for Lecter to speak first. Will wears jeans and a shirt, jacket and tie, but not a white shirt. He's a casual guy passing himself off as a bureaucratic type. According to the novel, Lecter is asleep at this point, and tends to sleep most of the morning, suggesting he's a creature of the night, much like the Tooth Fairy Killer, who Will is hunting for. There is a vampiric framing to Lecter in the novels, and actor Brian Cox, when he sits up, has a distinctive vampire look. But first we hear Lecter take a big breath to try and smell the identity of who has just entered his cell. Before he speaks, though, note the new camera angle here. This one is a fourth wall breaker, positioned behind the wall that Will has sat against, Interesting choice, it frames the two characters together in the shot. After all, their interaction will be a very close and personal one in this scene. Note also that Lecter is partially hidden by the large rectangular box that houses the lock to the door. At first I considered this a happy accident, but it occurs again in one of the other Lecter scenes in this film in a much more blatant way. And so having him partially hidden here visually is appropriate because Lecter is something of a mystery to all who meet him. This is hugely emphasised in the build-up to this meeting in the novel, and it gets a bit of lip service in the film. What the psychologists say was wrong with the Lecter? Psychologists call him a psychopath. They don't know what else to call him. Also important to the introduction of Lecter here is that the score for the scene begins right before Lecter first speaks. The music is a low-volume sequence of hypnotic melodies fitting with the hypnotic qualities of Lecter's communication. That's the same atrocious aftershave you wore in court three years ago. Lecter's opening line already speaks volumes in terms of implications. First is Lecter's incredible sensory awareness. He can identify people by smell alone, just as some animals can. He also appears to be announcing his sensory awareness on purpose to his visitor. 
letting Gwil know that he is an acute sensory information sponge, and he's so confident of this ability, he takes the risk of verbally identifying his guest before sitting up. Imagine how mistakenly arrogant he'd look if it turned out to be someone else. At the same time, it appears to be an underhanded jest, like a joke to an old buddy. Or perhaps it's an outright insult. But for me, the darkest element of this line is the idea that when Lecter was being tried in court for his crimes, he was so indifferent to the proceedings, he was more interested in the incidental smells of the courtroom and what those smells told him about the people in that room. Will's reply is calm and softly spoken, but also a jokey deflection of the insult. That's the same atrocious aftershave you wore in court three years ago. Yeah, I keep getting it for Christmas. So up like the sits, and my lord, we are looking vampiric today, aren't we? Thick dark eyebrows, black hair gelled back to accentuate that Dracula V-shape in the hairline. He looks like Bella Lugosi. Right folks, that was a free clip from my new 73 minute video, The Other Hannibal Lecter, which is all about Brian Cox's Lecter as portrayed in the movie Manhunter. Um, and it also goes into the source novel uh, depiction of the Lecter character, uh, the novel Red Dragon. So there's two ways you can access this video. Uh, you can either go to my website, which is what you can see here, that is linked in the video description below. And we'll go through that process in a minute if you want to order the digital download. The other option is to go to my Patreon support page, which is also in the uh, video description below. And as you can see there, 73 minute video is available to my Patreon supporters. Uh, so because it's a long video, you have to go for the high tier um, subscription, which is £6.50 a month, which I think is about just over $8 a month. Uh, that will give you access to that, that video. Uh, you, as you can see here, you've got three different tiers of subscription and depending on which tier you go for, you can get access to different lengths of video. If you want any videos that are over 60 minutes like this one, then you need to go for the higher tier. So you just join up and then you uh, access the video from there and watch it. Um, the other option, which is uh, to go to my website, you then go to, let's see, if, uh, if go to recent, yeah, as you can see there, on, on the, the recent page of my site, uh, you get a list of all the latest uploads and stuff, so you can find out which new sale videos are there, uh, which new free videos are there, because you might have missed some of them, uh, because I have multiple channels as well, so keep an eye on that page for the latest content, anything new I do is virtually always goes on that page. Uh, if you want to order that video, go to the film analysis page, scroll down and it's actually listed at two points on this page it's listed under manhunter you know for the movie manhunter uh, there we go manhunter the other hannibal lecter 73 minute video you click view product and yep you get your description you click add to cart it goes up in the corner and if you want to order anything else hang on let me just show you where where else you can find it on this page it's also listed under silence of the lambs because it's a, a hannibal lecter related video and the video does talk a little bit about silence of the lambs anyway so if you wanted something else like say uh thoughts on silence of the lambs and the pathology of serial murder which is a one hour 40 minute video then you would click view product Add to cart, it goes up there, and you just stack up any items you want. And when you've picked out all the videos you want, you click checkout, and then you put it, input your email address where you want your video links to be sent to, and you select credit card or PayPal, and then click pay, and off you go. It's really very simple. Okay, so that's it, folks. Um, new content on the way soon. I've got a new video on the game Alien Isolation, which is in the pipeline. I've actually got a bunch of videos on that one coming up because it's taken me months to organize all of my 130 gigabytes worth of uh, playthrough footage from that. So there's going to be a lot of analysis of Alien Isolation with a lot of crossover analysis with the original Alien movie. I've probably got three or four videos coming on that in the near future, and one of them is part written at the moment. A whole bunch of other stuff on the way as well. So I will see you guys soon. Those links are in the video description below if you want this Hannibal Lecter video. Okay, you've been listening to Rob Ager. Bye-bye.